Bite into a classic French tart, and right away you'll notice how different the crust is from classic American pie. It's sweeter, crumblier, less flaky, and more like a cookie in texture. The dough is called pâte sucre, and it's the foundation for many sweet tarts. In this episode, you'll learn the differences between pâte sucre and pie dough, and I'll show you how to make a tangy lemon tart with the pâte sucre crust. Pâte sucre is the French term for sweet pastry dough. It has more sugar in it than traditional American pie dough, and it has a tender, crumbly texture compared to the flakier American doughs. We're going to start by cutting butter and flour together. So in goes our all-purpose flour, confectioner sugar. You can see it's a lot more than the American pie doughs. Salt. And we're going to pulse this together briefly, just until it's combined. Okay. We're going to add our butter. This butter, as you can see, is cut into small pieces. And it's not ice cold, because we're really looking to combine the flour and butter together a bit more than we would with traditional pie doughs. We don't want to over-process this. We're going to pulse these guys together just until it forms coarse crumbs. And this looks just right. As you can see, there are still pea-sized pieces of butter. And now we're going to add an egg yolk. Some recipes do call for whole eggs, uh, pat sucres. But in this one, we're just going to add one yolk and a tablespoon of ice water, which I'm going to drizzle around over our crumb texture. And we're going to continue processing in pulses until the dough just begins to come together. It's quite crumbly, but very soft. So now we're ready to line our tart pan. There are two ways to line the tart pan with the dough. You can roll it in, or you can press it in. First, I'll show you how to press it in. Once it's in the crumbly texture, Dump it right into the pan. Now this dough hasn't even been chilled. And then using your fingertips, very lightly dusted with flour, take about one tablespoon pieces and just press it up against the side of the pan, spreading it a little bit until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Take another piece, space it a little bit, and again, press it up against the side of the pan. And I'm pinching off where it's overlapping a little bit on the top so I make sure that I don't have too much dough up against the sides. And we'll flatten off the top once we're done. So you can see that this dough, when you're pressing it in, has a, has a kind of rough, rustic look to it. But once you bake it and fill it, it will look polished and very sophisticated. Now, I'm going to crumble up the rest of this over the bottom, try and divide it up evenly, and then just continue pressing in with your hands. Going into the corners and covering the entire bottom as evenly as you can. I'm pressing down, but I'm also pressing out. I'm pushing the dough a little bit. That will make it cook more evenly and brown more evenly. Now I'm going to show you how to roll the pat sucre. As you can see, we took the dough crumbles and put them onto a piece of plastic wrap and shaped it into a disc and refrigerated it until it was firm. Once we're ready to roll, unwrap our disc. And we're just going to lightly dust both sides, not too much flour, and do our rolling. Starting from the center, going out, you can see how soft and lovely the dough is. Now, if you don't have parchment, you can just roll right on the surface. You do have to be a little bit more careful that you're flouring and turning repeatedly so it doesn't stick to the counter. The dough is very supple, and it's easy to move around. Don't worry too much about creating a perfect circle. We're going to trim it off anyway, so it doesn't matter. Dusting underneath by gently rolling the dough around the pin. And take out your trusty ruler, and just make sure you have at least 12 inches around. This looks just perfect. 
Just like we did with the pie doughs, we're going to gently roll it around the rolling pin. Position your tart pan and then gently unravel. There you go. One of the beautiful things about Pat Sucre is that while it is a bit softer and a bit more fragile to work with, you can also patch the dough. It's easy to pinch off an extra from your outside and then just very gently pat it in. I'm using my side of my fingers to press the dough gently into the corners and slightly against the sides. Now, at this point, we have two choices. We can just take the rolling pin and roll it right over the top of the tart pan, pressing right off it, and that will cut off the excess dough. Or, if you want to, you can trim off all but maybe a half an inch of dough. And again, I'm just using a regular kitchen scissors for this. You can use a small knife, too. That's fine. And I'll fold it over and press it up again to the sides. It just makes it a little sturdier if you're putting in a heavy filling or maybe a lot of fruit. The dough is soft, but it's not sticky. As with American pie dough, it's best to use as little extra flour as possible. We're just going to make sure it's all the way up to the top by pressing around and against. And I'll just roll this over in case there's a little bit of excess so we make sure we have a nice polished finish. Now, the tart is ready to go into the refrigerator or the freezer to chill until it's firm. Then it's ready to bake. And line the inside with foil. And you do want to make sure you get it into the corners so your pie weights can go right up against the side. Pour them in until it fills the tart pan. And then I press it down a little bit. We've heated the oven to 425. But as soon as we get the tart into the oven, turn the temperature down to 400. And we're going to partially bake the tart shell, fill it, and then continue baking. I've lowered the oven temperature to 325. And I'm going to let the crust cool while I make the filling. This is a super easy filling to make. It starts with some granulated sugar, all-purpose flour, table salt, and I'm going to add the lemon zest as well. And we're going to stir this together until the lemon zest is separated and there are no clumps remaining. I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla extract. Always make sure to use pure vanilla extract and whisk this into our eggs until the eggs are blended, but not whipped up. We're not looking for frothy here. That looks great. I'm going to add our fresh lemon juice into our sugar mixture. Stir that around until it's nice and blended. And then we're going to add our lightly beaten eggs and stir this together. Don't want to over whisk this, otherwise your filling will be foamy and frothy on top. Still delicious, but not as pretty to look at. OK. And we're just going to pour it right into our baked crust. And now we'll return it to the oven to bake. So why don't we check and see if our tart is done? It smells good. I'm going to lean in and just gently nudge the pan. And when it, the tart is done, the center will just jiggle slightly. That's perfect. The oven door onto the cooling rack. Now, the tart should cool until it's room temperature before serving. Or you can cool it to room temperature and then pop it in the fridge overnight and serve it chilled the next day.